Hello and welcome to another episode of Pause for Payments. I'm Christy Duncan and I'm really excited today uh, to have a discussion with Natalie Osman, a fellow engineer and COO at Curve, which is an awesome fintech based in London. Welcome, Natalie. Hi, thank you very much. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. As you know, we've known each other for a very long time. <laughs> So it's great to, to be a part of this. And I'm really happy to talk to you about what Curve has been up to. Yeah, well, we're excited to hear about it. You've got some amazing innovation happening and you're now scaling this FinTech Curve. And I wanted just to talk a little bit about that because uh, for anyone who's interested about learning how to take a FinTech to a global scale, uh, Curve is a great case study. So let's get started. Sure. Can you tell us, for those who aren't familiar with Curve, tell us about this amazing innovation that you've got in the card space and, and uh, share that concept with our audience, could you? Absolutely. Um, so um, first of all, Curve is what we call an over-the-top banking platform. Uh, and it's basically um, a card and you can put all your cards together in one uh, and you use this app uh, in order to manage across all your different payment cards. You know, we all are carrying around multiple cards, right? And so uh, this is a great way to do it. And then you do have uh, your physical card, which you can also put onto um, your uh, phone payment device if you want. So Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay. Um, the reason we exist is so that we can connect people's uh, to their to their to their money. Right, it's right at their fingertips, and they can go on and and live their lives without really having to think about which cards or how they're going to do um, certain payment um, functions. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, our mission is to basically simplify and unify how people spend, send, see, and save their money. Um, so that's, that's what we do. And as we get more into it, I'll talk a little bit more about how it works and how putting all of your cards in one place allows you to kind of do a lot of interesting things, unless you want me to do that now. <laughs> well, the details, I mean, being the engineer, I'm always interested in the details. Um, yeah. Tell us how it works. Like it, there's some pretty interesting, you know, innovation. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you start putting all your cards in one place and I'm not going to go into the technology, but it's a bit of an open banking type technology uh, that we, we use. Uh, we then all of a sudden give you the ability, let's say, this is my best example. You, most people believe that when you are about to pay for something and you're at the till, you're going to have to make a decision about what card you're going to use. So you're sitting there probably with your wallet open and you're like, oh, I'm going to use this card and you pay for it. And then that decision has been made. You've paid with that card. So whether it's a credit card you need to pay off at the end of the month or whatever, that decision has been made. Well, the way that we do it on Curve actually, and the technology that you, we use, it allows you to go back in time and change that decision and move it over to another card, which is pro probably one of our most uh, sought after features for a lot of different reasons. Um, and that's really powerful um, because as soon as you realize that that decision point is something that we've been conditioned to do just because of the form factor and the way that the technology works, but you don't have to do it that way, uh, you all of a sudden realize that it opens you up to a lot of possibilities for you to manage your money. So I'm, an example I can give you is we have a, a sole tra a trader who's a photographer, a lot of outgoing expenses and doesn't always get paid all at once. He manages every month with his accountant. He uses, you know, the curve card and then he decides, do I put it on this card or that card? What card should I put it on so that I have, I split out my my expenses in the right way for me to be filing and doing everything I need to do for my taxes or my, my business. Fantastic for a sole trader to be able to do that, to have that flexibility to move things around uh, right then and there. So, you know, that's just a one real life example of how people are using the Curve platform. We also have Curve Credit that's gonna be coming out quite soon. Again, that's also, you can, you wanna make a big purchase and you all of a sudden realize that, oh, it's just gonna be a little bit hard for me to pay for that spread it out over installments, decide where you want that payment to come from, 
make it easy bite-sized chunks. It's an unsecured loan that you can get quite easily uh, if you have good credit line. So those are some of the things you can do. Oh, so this is, yeah, I love this. It's like the curveball applied to financial services. <laughs> awesome. It is. Um, and really innovative. And you know, I'm sure there's all kinds of really interesting stuff going on in the background. I want to talk a little bit about scaling. And you know, as COO of Curve, this is a, a fintech that's now scaling around the world. We've got you know offices opening up as we speak. Um, you're in, introducing innovative new ideas to the fintechs and, and payment sphere. And you've had some experience with previous roles. I know when you were um, in one role, you launched a new payments product across EMEA and you know, you've done a lot of this stuff, but scaling a product across a huge region with millions of people is a daunting task. Can you tell us, how do you do that? Like, what steps are, are required? Like, what's the A to, a to Z on, on how that all happens? A to Z, yes. Um, so let me then um, give you a little bit of my, my background. Uh, so I am a payments person. Don't like to be called a payments veteran, <laughs> but um, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> 15 years with American Express. Uh, and then uh, after that, I moved on uh, in 2015 to Samsung, where I headed up Samsung Pay for Europe. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in about 18 months, we launched uh, six markets across Europe. Uh, and that was at a time when all the pays, um, um, Google Pay, which was originally Android Pay, and um, uh, Samsung Pay and Apple Pay were all uh, starting to introduce this new payment um, um, method, um, and uh, and so that was pretty that was pretty game changing, and, and we'll talk about that. And uh, at Idemia, I moved on after that to Idemia, uh, where we were looking at digital identity and how we would be able to. Uh, push that across the globe uh, because that was something I had uh, realized is a real pain point when you start to look at um, managing across your finances. Uh, and then that led me that led me actually back to Curve. I met Curve when I was at Samsung Pay. But your question is really about how, how do you go about um, launching a product in mass and get take up uh, uh, you know, across uh, multiple regions. So just so that uh, we understand where Curve is today, uh, Curve is, is heading very quickly towards 1.5 million customers. Uh, we're just shy of that now. Um, and we right now are, um, have a product in, in the UK, of course, which is where we're headquartered in London. Uh, but we also have about half of our customers that come out of the uh, Euro Euro European economic area, so all of Europe. Um, and uh, that's really interesting because we've not spent a lot of money in Europe. Uh, we've not spent a lot of money full stop on anything that we might call marketing. Um, and what's really been the thing that has driven us I believe it really does go back to it's a product that uh, meets the needs or at least speaks once when people start to learn about it it's it speaks to them in a way of like solving some problems that maybe they didn't realize that they had or that they realize it makes um, their lives a little bit better most 60 over 60 percent of our growth comes from referrals so it's people telling their friends about curve and that's what's been happening across Europe as well. Um, and, and that's really interesting. So you have to have a proposition that makes sense. Uh, it needs to meet some kind of known or unknown pain point. And I think a lot of the rest of it starts to take care of itself, really. Um, and if I think back, to what you were asking me, which was, you know, I did that at Samsung um, when we launched Samsung Pay across Europe. That was a little bit different. There was a lot of marketing dollars behind it, uh, but that was to grow quite quickly. 
so um, what we needed to do there, though, was focus on which one, which which markets, which countries were the most important for us to go after and what the European proposition should look like and how it was different maybe from the US or the South Korean proposition that was um, built. So, you know, there is always a bit of localization, I guess, that needs to be done in order to meet local market needs. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. The think global, act local kind of approach. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's... It's an old saying, but it's still, it still uh, holds very, very true. Indeed. But it sounds like you're doing something right if 60% of your growth is coming from referrals. Um, yeah. It's, the number. So I'm going to give you the positive and the negative of that. 60% of... Uh, of our growth comes from referrals, um, which means that you talk to people like you. If you think about us yeah. talking here and the women in payments, you, you know, you might talk to the rest of the women in payments organizations. So you'll get a lot of women. Well, our base is a lot of men. So we get a lot of men referring a lot to a lot of men. Uh, and our base, uh, we need to improve our base. Uh, and get, uh, I believe, and that's one of the targets that we have for this year is to uh, speak a bit more to women and to, um, you know, and to, and to share what that proposition is with women. Um, and that's why some of the things that we will be launching uh, soon will be speaking a little bit more to, um, to get to that demographic uh, that I think we're missing. Well, that makes a lot of sense, especially when you look at in most countries where, where I've seen stats anyway, the majority of consumer purchases are made by women, like three quarters of them yeah. or more in some cases. So yeah. if you want to increase your spend, you know, uh, numbers, then women are a good place to- well, I mean, you know, we, we buy things just as much as men, like everybody. <laughs> Everybody pays well, no, for but, stuff, right? Very often the women are buying all the groceries, they're buying all the school supplies, mm -hmm. buying all the stuff for the home. And so I'm generalizing, but that tends to be the case. And so yeah. our transaction volumes tend to be higher. That's right. So it makes sense to want to to want to target us as a you know a big consumer group if yeah. you're actually represented currently. So interesting. So you've got this awesome job as COO of a very, you know, growing, busy company, and you manage a very diverse and geographically dispersed team. And I'm sure some days that's not always easy. Um, and especially when we have crazy things like the downfall of Wirecard, which has impacted so many players around the world, including Curve. How do you manage through a huge challenge like that? And Something like that doesn't even give you time to think and plan out a strategy because it just happened like that overnight. Okay, so um, in order to answer the question, let me give a little a little bit of, uh, of background. So uh, in terms of curve um, and uh, our diverse, our, our diverse uh, and geographically dispersed team, it's true. We have a London headquarters, a Bristol office, and uh, we've just opened the US. Um, you know, in the past, I had global roles uh, and much more geographically di di you know, um, dispersed teams. But yes, this is a great, a great start and a, and a great way for us to, to grow. I am very, very proud of the diversity that we do have um, across our business. We have over 34 uh, different nationalities uh, and uh, actually yesterday I was just looking at some of our um, gender um, percentages across the organization and uh, we're doing quite well there um, as well. Always can do better, but uh, you know, I was quite happy with the first results that we saw. So, you know, for me, it's really important and actually going back to that, you know, if you want to get more women to use our product, well, we should have more women in the company <laughs> because, uh, you know, we're the ones who, who, can, who can advise on what are the things that we would like to see as an example. Um, in terms of uh, what, you know, when you're scaling up and you're a fintech, a fintech or any startup, 
uh, you are used to pivoting. Uh, it's easier for you this, you know, based on my enterprise background, because that's really what I do have. I know how to work in large companies and this is a 300 person company. Um, you know, we do pivot a lot more quickly and we are able to get things to market uh, faster than I had experienced in larger companies where you'd have to do a lot of alignment internally. Uh, you know, your alignment might last longer than the actual development, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, we did rely on Wirecard. Uh, we issued through Wirecard, so the cards came from them. So if anybody out there has a Curve card, you'll see it says issued by Wirecard on the back. Um, but at but we had gotten to a, a significant enough size that we are able to issue ourselves. So we had already announced earlier this year that we were going to move uh, over and become a principal member of MasterCard ourselves and be able to issue our cards. So that, that was already something that was in the works. Uh, but Wirecard was also um, our acquirer because we become the merchant in the transaction. And, um, and that's where we, we were really stuck. So. Wirecard got shut down by the FCA. Well, we got shut down, I guess, by the FCA. We couldn't, we couldn't do anything. So because Wirecard was shut down, we couldn't do anything. It ended up affecting, I, I think, about 20 fintechs across Europe. Um, I, I would dare to say that we were probably one of the larger ones because we relied on Wirecard not only for issuing but acquiring. For those of us in payments, we all know what that is. And, um, and so all of a sudden, you know, I didn't know Friday morning when we would be turned back on, if ever. And we really had to take a very strong position to survive. So I think my first part of the question is failure wasn't an option. It was literally do or die. Um, and that gave us all a really strong mission. And I've read a lot of books about, you know, when you have a mission, you'll work hard. Well, there's nothing like we need to turn the lights back on now <laughs> and do it as quickly as possible. Um, Shahar was the one who set out a goal that we would do it over the weekend. Um, I would also say that another big thing for us is culture. Um, we have a very, very strong culture for taking ownership um for um settling one of them is called settle for excellence uh um and focusing on the mission so these are all uh some of our leadership principles that we talk about quite a lot in the company and every we we very quickly focused on what the different work streams were going to be who uh was leading each work stream and then we had a central point to manage all of that. So it was a very um, focused set of work. I would say half, half of the company spent the entire weekend glued to their desks working on different things. Um, and uh, we, we got through it. I, I do think it's, you know, I'm, I'm, Believe me, what I have, I've said it uh, uh, many times, what could have been the worst day in my career ended up being the best experience of my career. My career has been long, <laughs> but uh, I think it's because, you know, we're hiring, we're hiring people that fit culturally. We have a very strong culture based interview process. Uh, we handpick them for their skills. We, we make sure that they're high performers. We, we give feedback almost immediately. Um, one of the things that we do is that we make sure in the first week that somebody comes on board that they have a deliverable to get used to the pace. So I was given a deliverable in my first week. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> wow, okay, I haven't even met everybody. But it's a great way to join a company because then all of a sudden you realize that this is a, this is a company that does and we have a bias for action. Um, we also uh, have objectives um, in the company. So uh, we, um, objectives and key results, OKRs. This is a Google thing. Uh, we use that quite well. Well, we ticked off four major OKRs over that weekend. <laughs> uh, so everybody felt really good. Um, and, and, you know, we, we, we had managed to do something really important as well along the way, which is to lower our cost base. So that was, that was um, 
some of the things that we did. Uh, I hope I've answered the question. Is there anything I missed out? No, that's that's so inspiring to hear that. It sounds like you're very, very agile uh, and nimble, which is one of the really awesome things about being in a small fintech is that you aren't hamstrung by that legacy culture, the legacy infrastructure, the legacy uh, ways of doing things that you can just be very, very nimble and get things done. And I love the team approach of, you know, we're all in this together. We're going to support each other and that culture settle for excellence. And, and in what was it? 48 hours, 60 hours, it was all done and dusted. It was. We also made sure, I forgot to mention one thing, we made sure to communicate everything that we were doing externally. We, we have a Curve community page. We, we were updating those who are the diehards, like want to hear what's going on. You know, there's, a, there's quite a lot of actually chatter there on a regular basis. And, and by the way, we use that channel to inform us on the product, which is great. I mean, um, it's great to see what people do after work in, in the evenings because they, you know, they just want to talk about payments even more, which makes me very happy. And we get some of our great ideas, but they were sometimes some of our worst critics over that weekend, but also informed us on what we needed to work on and what we needed to communicate. We also used Twitter and um, you know, we, our CX team was all on board uh, answering those questions as people were coming in saying, I can't use my account, what's going to happen? How am I going to do this? We did have um, some hangover effects from the quick switch, one of which was our refunds. So you can't just plug in from one and then plug into another over the weekend. And then, you know, if you bought something on, on this end of it and then returned it on that end, but there's somebody different in between, that was a little bit complex. And, and that uh, did take a little bit longer for us to sort out. But I mean, all those transactions are, of course, recorded and we were able to find them all. It just took a while to, to reconcile. So that was a little bit painful. Uh, unfortunately, there was, um, but we were able to respond to those that, you know, had some big refunds coming back and we were able to do things for them. Well, it sounds like quite an adventure and it's one of those things that really builds confidence. I always say, if you don't encounter those kinds of challenges in your career, then you don't build the confidence that, you know what, like here's the worst that could happen and now I know we can get through it. So. You know, the rest, that's I don't exactly say right. it's easy. That was, ex I mean, I think that's, you, you hit the nail on the head. We, we feel absolutely invincible. And it's almost like we had to do so much in such a small um, period of time. That now, all of a sudden, things are just getting crunched out again and, you know, again and again. And, you know, by the way, that same week, I, we had announced the Samsung Pay card partnership and then we got shut you know like the wednesday we announce it and then the weekend we get shut down it's just like we i mean it's not only our customers but our 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 partners we can't let them down so we absolutely like by that monday needed to be back up and just you know because we knew we were going to get that call from samsung like what's going on <laughs> so we needed we needed to make sure we could say listen not a problem we're still on track uh, on this so and that's what we've launched last week, the Samsung Pay Card, powered by Curve. So it's all very exciting. Wow, congratulations. That <laughs> is such a great story. It's really inspiring, Natalie. And you clearly have been able to engage your team so positively through something that I'm sure they all can give themselves a really big pat on the back about at the end of the day, at the end of the weekend. <laughs> the case. Exactly. <laughs> Those drinks at the pub were well earned that Monday evening. That's awesome. Yep. So I want to close out this discussion by talking a little bit about careers. And you've had this amazing, successful career in payments and now fintech with a number of really interesting, but actually um, kind of uh, logical stepping stones with Amex, then Samsung and Idemia, now Curve. And you've also got an, an engineering degree, which is an absolute bonus. But for those of you, for those in our audience who might be considering a career in fintech, can you share some advice? Like, what advice would you give to them? Sure. I mean, I would start by saying that every move I made um, 
I knew somebody. <laughs> so uh, leaving Amex was a hard decision for me. I absolutely loved my time at Amex, um, but it was time for me to go. Um, and um, through my network, uh, I knew the um, person who ended up taking the, the role in the globe, as the global head of Samsung Pay, he, and he moved from New York to Korea, and he gave me a call about that role. Uh, Idemia was similar. I had launched Sam, uh, the first market, uh, Samsung Pay, in um, Spain, and Idemia was one of our technology partners, and I really liked uh, the team there. And um, you know, I I wanted to work with some some people uh, that I really had gotten along with for, on a professional basis, um, and that was much to Shahar's disappointment because he was trying to bring me into Curve, <laughs> who I also met when I was at Samsung. Um, and the first time around, Curve was probably a bit too small for me. It was a Series A company uh, um, back then, um, and about. 30 or 40 people and I was used to a larger company um, and Shahar managed to convince me uh, to come over to Curve and I, I'm really happy that he did because it's, it's been great. But in terms of what, you know, it doesn't always happen that way, but people do say it's, it's the network. So I'm going to tell you it's the network and something like Women in Payments is a fantastic network. Um, but if you want to, I, I do have a lot of um, questions like that. How, how I'm, I'm part of an enterprise, you know, or, you know, part of a bank or, you know, how do I get into a fintech? Um, I guess my, I have, yes, a couple of, of points that I usually will, will say. Um, first is connect with people in the industry. So, you know, it's all small, so we're all moving around. So just have some, have some chats with people that you know, even if it's just a courtesy chat, just to say hi and just remind everybody what you do because all skills are transferable. Um, go to conferences and, and conventions or these webinars and things like that because you're gonna listen and you will, you will hear and get some ideas of talking points and you know what we experience. So like, like this <laughs> uh, is great. Um, and you know, I uh, read about the industry, I read you know, that's how I made an impression when I went to Samsung. I was really interested in, in what was happening um, in, in product development and mobile payments. So I was quite knowledgeable uh, when I went into uh, the meetings and had, uh, but because I'm an engineer, a scary amount of <laughs> technical knowledge as well, um, which was really helpful. Even though I wasn't at Amex specifically working on mobile payments, I just was interested. So just read, read, um, uh, you know, and, and learn, learn about what's happening in whatever area you might be interested in. Um, the thing that uh, I talk to people about in terms of working in a, a fintech is that it is absolutely high pressure uh, and fast paced. Um, it's relentless, but um, it's, for me at least, it's, it's a very, positive um, energy, I guess. Uh, I do, um, I just, I'm very interested in what's going on and the, you, the decisions you're making are very impactful. And I, I, I'm absolutely loving that aspect. So when I say it's high pressure and fast paced, uh, it's not in a, in a draining way. Uh, in terms of the teams around me, Gosh, I mean, really smart and passionate people from all walks of life um, who are just really interested in trying and doing new things. And I love that. Very at Curve, at least, and this comes from Shahar and myself, we're not political people. We keep the politics at a minimum. And how do we keep the politics at a minimum? Very open. There's no talking behind people's backs or saying things. It's what I say to you, I'm going to say to the other person, and it's going to be very clear uh, what we've said. And Shahar does that as well. So, um, you know, I, I think that's, that's, I don't know if that's every fintech, that's curve. Um, you do, you do drink the Kool-Aid a bit. Uh, you get passionate about your own company and it's kind of fun to watch what your, your little company might be doing. And you definitely, definitely feel, um, that you have a chance to change things. Um, 
that maybe when you're in a larger company, you're just part of the, um, the big tank engine and the big machine, so you don't feel as excited. But um, my advice is go out of your comfort zone. Um, take that risk to join you know, a, a young, fast-growing company that, by the way, Curve's average age is 28. <laughs> Um, and, but we have, of course, uh, we span all, all ages, um, but it, it's, it's, you know, fun to be around, um, a company that's, that's, you know, a bit, uh, younger in the age group and, and just more dynamic. And, uh, you know, we, we, we do hire, we're kind of have a pause on hiring or limiting our hiring now for COVID, unfortunately, but we are, um, uh, you know, looking forward to a Series C, uh, and with the Series C, obviously comes a new hiring. And I particularly put a, an ask out that if anybody's a woman engineer <laughs> to come see me, um, that's the area where uh, we're a little bit slim. <laughs> awesome. Well, we love women engineers. I, I think women in particular can add so much to any kind of payments team, just because, I mean, talking earlier about the volume of payment transactions made by women. The women on the on the product teams and the development teams and the CX teams, they understand that women's customer experience. 100%. So it's, it's really important. Thank you so much for sharing those insights, Natalie. I love the um, the networking and the learning, the lifelong learning, the lifelong networking and the curiosity and the ability to or the interest to have something that's really fast moving and exciting that's that's so inspiring um better look out we might get a whole bunch of resumes on your desk very that's soon. good please <laughs> yeah absolutely well thanks for sharing these insights it has been an absolute delight speaking with you i love what you're doing at curve it sounds really exciting and really impactful and uh, wish you luck that you don't get any more challenges like the wire card <laughs> <That's right. laughs> challenge. But uh, it's been fascinating and uh, I'm sure it'll resonate with our audience as well. So thank you, Natalie. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm going to encourage all of our audience to join us online for the many other Pause for Payments webinars that we host with inspirational women leaders from around the global payments ecosystem. So Thanks everybody for listening today.